Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to learn about placement, which is the second step of backend of chip designing, which comes after floor planning. And if you don't know what is floor planning, you can see my previous video on floor plan. So without any further ado, let's get started. So what is placement? Placement is the process of finding a suitable location for each cell in the core of a chip. So we know that there are certain predefined cells called standard cells and finding a suitable location for them in the core area is called placement. Now you might be thinking that there are millions and billions of standard cells in the design. So how will we find the exact location for each cell in the core? But don't worry, we don't do that. The tool does this for us. There are certain algor algorithms defined based on which the tool works and tries to find the suitable location for every cell in the design. So what is the major goal of the placement? The major goal of the placement is to have a minimal area and to minimize the interconnect length. Why? Because it directly affects the cost of the chip. If the area is more and if routing resources are more, then the cost of the chip will also be more, right? Now let's just understand how placement affects the area and the interconnect length. Just think that if cells are placed far than required, then it will take much more area, right? And not only area, we will need extra routing resources to connect them as well. So if we are using more area and more inter inter interconnect length, it will be increase the cost and will also increase the congestion because of the lack of routing resources. Now let's see the placement steps in much more detail. So before starting placement, the tool needs certain inputs like floor plan DB. Floor plan DB will give us the info about pre-placed cells and also the power routing and logical and physical libraries Logical libraries will tell us the timing info of the standard cells and physical libraries will tell us the physical info of standard cells like size of the standard cell for example. And constraints will give us the timing and design constraints which we have set for example the uncertainty, the max fan out. Now once we have the proper inputs, the placement tool starts the placement in two steps. First it does the global placement. Then, in, then it moves on to detailed placement. So once the placement is done, we have the final physical layout info which has the location of all the cells. Now we will understand both of these steps in detail. So let's see what is global placement. So during global placement, the tool does a very rough placement based on logical connectivity and constraints like wire length, timing, congestion, power, etc. So during this step, the tool divides the whole core of a chip into small, small boxes, which are called G cells. And it roughly places these cells in these G cells based on logical connectivity and constraints like timing, congestion, power, etc. Please note that that at this stage, a very clean placement is not done. You will see overlapping of cells during global placement. Also note that during global placement, routing is also done which is called trial routing. So trial routing is a very quick routing in which the tool quickly routes the design without fixing any DRC or LVS. Let's understand trial routing in little more detail. So trial routing is, trial routes are the shortest Manhattan distance between two points. So in our case, two pins because we have to route between two pins of standard cells, right? So for example, if we want to calculate the distance between A and C, then according to the Manhattan distance, the AC will be calculated as absolute AB distance plus absolute BC distance. So if we have to route from pin A to pin C, we will go like this AB then BC. So as you can see here, if we have to route from this pin to this pin, we will, we will go like this because this will be the shortest Manhattan distance. So what is the benefit of using trial routing? We know that right during synthesis we used to calculate the delay using wire load model. But now since trial routing is done, we can take the RNC values of trial routes to calculate the delay. 
which will be much more accurate than using the wire load model. So after global placement, if you see your flight lines like this, basically flight lines show the logical connectivity. So if it if your flight lines are looking like this zigzag or messy, then you can understand that it is a bad placement. But if your flight lines are much cleaner, then it is a good placement. So after global placement, we move on to the next step, which is detailed placement. Detailed placement is divided into two steps. One is legalization and the other one is optimization. So we'll look at legalization first. So during legalization, the legalization of global placement is done. So in this step, the tool, the tool fixes the overlaps which were created during global placement. As you can see here, in the global placement, it were, all the cells were overlapped like this. But during legalization, it has, the cells has been placed to their appropriate location without any overlaps. So after legalization, the next step is optimization. During optimization, the tool does lot of things. So during optimization, the tool further improves the legalized placement in, a, in an iterative manner. It rearranges the module on region by region basis. So for example, if this cell is talking to this cell, so in global placement, the tool did not think about the module to module connectivity that much. It was, you know, concentrating on uh, placing the cells in one particular module together. So during optimization, it will place them it will place them closer, it will bring them closer, so it will focus on the module to module connectivity. Also during placement, the tool not only places the standard cells, but it also optimizes them. So it will uh, optimize the redundant logic or you know, do things like logical reordering, vertical swap, global swap, etc. It optimizes the design and try to remove the timing violations which are created due, due to the relative placement on die. So, so this is an iterative process. One round of optimization is done, then again legalization is done, then again optimization is done. So until a certain criteria of timing, power, congestion is reached, optimization and legalization keeps happening in an iterative manner. So after the tool has done its best to optimize the design in the best possible way, it stops the iterations and our placement stops with that. So now we will see some things which also happened during placement, but we haven't looked at them till now. So we will not under so we will not see this in very detail. I'll just tell you a one line definition about them and maybe I'll make another video explaining these things in more detail. So during placement, something called high fan out net synthesis also takes place. So what is this high fan out net synthesis? Now we know that there are certain nets in the design which have very high fan out and if nets have very high fan out it means they have very high load and if they have very high load it means they will see very high delay. So to fix that, that during placement the tool does something called high fan out net synthesis during which it tries to buffer the nets which have very high fan out which in turn decreases the load and decreases the delay as well. Also, I wanted to mention that during placement, the tool uses the idle clock because at this stage, CTS is not yet done. So during DFT, which is designed for testability process, scan chains are inserted in the design. And during placement, some kind of DFT optimization is done because of which we need to reorder the scan chains in order to have an efficient wire length. So after the placement, tie cells are inserted in the design. If you want to know what are tie cells and why they are inserted, you can see my previous video on the tie cells, the link of which is given in the description box below and also on the i button above. Also, uh, during placement, we make sure that we scatter the spare cells uniformly in the whole core so that in case after tape out, we need to make some issues so we can make use of these spare cells. Now, at the placement, you must note that we check only the setup and we don't check hold. Why? Because till this point, the clock is not built and hence the skew is zero. So there is no point of checking hold. So at placement stage, we only check the setup and not hold. So now some of the post placement checks that you must do are, you must check that there should be no overlaps of standard cells in the design. There should not be any major setup violation because then later on it will not get fixed. At placement only, we should check for play, uh, setup violations. 
then the utilization should not be too high because if it is too high then uh, later on routing will create problem similarly there should not be too much congestion in the design because if there is congestion then again routing will not be possible and uh, we should check for power as well that power should be under control okay guys thank you for your time i hope you liked the video and i hope that it was useful if it was please do like share and subscribe please let me know your feedback in the comment section below thanks for watching